If we are to remain awake through a great revolution. Secondly, we are challenged to eradicate the last vestiges of racial injustice from our nation. I must say this morning that racial injustice is still the black man's burden and the white man's shame. It is an unhappy truth that racism is a way of life for the vast majority of white Americans, spoken and unspoken, acknowledged and denied, subtle and sometimes not so subtle. The disease of racism permeates and poisons a whole body politic. And I can see nothing more urgent than for America to work passionately and unrelentingly to get rid of the disease of racism. Something positive must be done. Everyone must share in the guilt as individuals and as institutions. The government must certainly share the guilt. Individuals must share the guilt. Even the church must share the guilt. We must face the sad fact at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning when we stand to sing, In Christ there is no east nor west. We stand in the most segregated hour of America. The hour has come for everybody, for all institutions, for the public sector and the private sector, to work to get rid of racism. Now, if we are to do it, we must honestly admit certain things and get rid of certain myths that have constantly been disseminated all over our nation. One is the myth of time. It is a notion that only time can solve the problem of racial injustice, and there are those who often sincerely say to the Negro and his allies in the white community, why don't you slow up, stop pushing things so fast, only time can solve the problem, and if you will just be nice and patient and continue to pray, in a hundred or two hundred years the problem will work itself out. Well, that is an answer to that myth. It is that time is neutral. It can be used either constructively or destructively. And I'm sorry to say this morning that I'm absolutely convinced that the forces of ill will in our nation, the extreme rightists of our nation, the people on the wrong side, use time much more effectively than the forces of goodwill. And it may well be that we will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the vitriolic words and the violent actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence and indifference of the good people who sit around and say, wait on time. Somewhere we must come to see that human progress never rolls in on the wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts and the persistent work of dedicated individuals who are willing to be co-workers with God. And without this hard work, time itself becomes an ally of the primitive forces of social stagnation. So, if we are to remain awake 